song, I just want to let you know uh, we will not be using our screens today. Uh, please forgive us. Uh, we're living out of boxes and we're doing the best we can with things. Um, so some some differences today. It'll be a little more old fashioned. So you will need your hymnal today. <laughs> And the bulletins are written, oh, and I got Sandy to rewrite it because you couldn't read mine. But uh, we've got some people out that are uh, recovering, some broken down, some, some uh, needing repairs, <laughs> kind of like uh, our house. Uh, but uh, we're, uh, we're thankful today to have Jim with us. And Jim informed me, I didn't realize he's been our neighbor for a, a 10 years or whatever, but he uh, used to live right down the hill here somewhere. Yeah, right down here next to Bob and Andrew King. And he said that the church had given them uh, food baskets when his father passed, <laughs> father-in-law passed away. And so uh, it's good to have you back with us. Thank you. So let's, uh, let's sing. Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand and sing number 534, Be Still My Soul. Let's do all verses. Number 87. Let's read together. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. no. In, In all, all things we are more than conquerors, conquerors 
believers through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Genesis 45, chapters 3 through 11, and chapter 15. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers couldn't say a word. They were so stunned with surprise. Come over here, he said, so they came closer. And he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But don't be angry with yourselves that you did this to me, for God did it. He sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. These two years of famine will grow to seven, during which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God has sent me here to keep you and your families alive so that you will become a great nation. Yes, it was God who sent me here, not you. And he has made me a counselor to Pharaoh and manager of his entire nation, ruler of all the of you, land of Egypt. Hurry, return to my father and tell him, your son Joseph says, God has made me chief of all the land of Egypt. Come down to me right away. You shall live in the land of Goshen so that you can be near me with all your children, your grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and all that you have. I will take care of you there. You men are witnesses of my promise, and my brother Benjamin has heard me say it. For there are still five years of famine ahead of us. Otherwise, you will come to utter poverty along with all of your household. And he did the same with each of his brothers who finally found their tongues. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Our second lectionary reading is from Luke 6, 27 to 38. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away from your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Coming up on the 20th, we have a, a dinner. Jim, you'll have to put that in your calendar. We have some good cooks here and try to come back on the 20th. Uh, yes, the mission dinner. It's, uh, uh, yeah. There's a sign-up sheet in the back, and I think uh, 
Uh, we, you've looked at it too, haven't you, Carol? I think we've pretty much got everything covered with food, but feel free to bring any specialty that you might want to bring. So it's our mission celebration dinner where we take uh, three different areas of giving and give. Uh, we're still trying to figure some of that out, but I think uh, we were one was going to be the school in Grundy, um, Mountain, Mission. Mountain Mission School, and then Sarah had a couple suggestions, so we'll we'll look at that. Um, for the uh, Western Kentucky. Uh, yeah. So we do an international, a local, and, uh, and a regional. regional. Okay. Anything else? Uh, we've got Ash Wednesday service will be coming up uh, soon, the first Wednesday of March. So that's coming up real soon, and we'll meet up here for that. Um, Anything Drive, if you don't care, remember so next week because it's 28th is the last day. Yes, so we're taking new teddy bears for the children's hospital uh, to donate to the chaplain services. Uh, we give those out quite a bit. So if you want to do that, make sure you bring new ones with tags on them. Thank you for that. Also, uh, I should throw this in there. Uh, we're always uh, looking for shoes. <laughs> especially larger shoes if you got and it don't have to be anything fancy it can be slippers uh, crocs uh, house shoes uh, when someone gets discharged from the hospital a lot of times they don't have shoes and, and so we try to provide those too they always call chaplains so if you happen to have especially larger ones uh, if you happen to have any if you don't want to don't know what to do with let me know they don't have to be new um, anything else before we go to prayer? Any prayer requests today or announcements? Continue to remember Michelle. Uh, she's still healing uh, from her knee surgery. Remember her. And, uh, Dave and Sarah. Dave and, and of course, Sarah. we got some in here that are still healing up and still working out. How's, how's that going, Johnny, with therapy going all right? Good. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes she says praise the Lord. Sometimes she says ouch. <laughs> I just like to share uh, since it's joys and concerns today. Just so thankful. Yesterday, of course, we had the big move and we had a house full of people and it was crazy and. I was having five conversations at one time, a couple of places. Uh, but just so thankful for family and for the love and the help. And, uh, you know, nobody got hurt. And uh, even Larry. <laughs> and we were all... Pull the muscle, but... Pull the muscle, but other than that, we're all doing good. So I just am thankful for uh, family and the love that family has and support from one Yeah, we couldn't have done it yesterday without... Without the kids helping, that's for sure. So, I recommend having kids. Just <laughs> um, any anything else? Any other special prayers? Continue to pray for all the people in the hospital and those who are sick. And if nothing else, uh, Wait, let's I'll, I'll speak. Yeah. Um, okay. For Joyce, follow up, saying, um, you know, a lot of things that you are going on in the world today. There's a lot of hate and a lot of negativity that's focused on. I'm just thankful today that there's still folks out there that are looking to the positive and have love in their heart. Amen. No matter what's going on. Amen. There's a lot of those folks out there, and, uh, and there'll be even more praying one for another and, uh, you know, setting, a, setting an example of God and have a set. Yeah, thank you, Jim. That, that's very true. Uh, I think of a, a song. It's not a religious song, but one of my favorite uh, singers. And most people don't even know who he is. He's from Canada. Joshua Heislop. <laughs> Joshua Heislop. Might be Hislop, but I call him Heislop. But uh, anyway, H-Y-L-S-O-P, I think. H-Y-S-O-P. Yeah. So anyway, he does a song that says... Um, don't remind me of my failures. I have not forgotten them. And uh, sometimes uh, people are constantly being told what they're doing wrong. And 
that happens in religious life a lot of times, but most of us realize we're, we're not perfect. Uh, but sometimes we need to be reminded of that divine spark within us, um, that God is, God is still there. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to share this morning? Anything on your heart? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's just take a moment today to bring your praises to God in the quietness of where you are. Give God thanks. I invite you to offer your confessions to God. prayer requests on your heart and those on our, in our church. Dear Lord, as we come before you, I thank you. I thank you, God, that you are always with us. And Lord, that you help us in good times and bad. And I thank you for family for church, family, for brothers and sisters in Christ who pray for us, support us in so many ways. I thank you for this church. And God, I pray for those in our church that are struggling. God, right now, uh, they need your touch. And you know who they are, Lord. I pray for those that are listening today by way of internet, or who will be, listen, who knows, years from now. God, that you can touch them in a very special way. And we pray, Lord, as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So our responsive reading is 772, I believe, this morning. 772. And you, you may have noticed uh, in the last few weeks that... Uh, We've been reading more scripture than norm, than we were, uh, and that is because this year my goal is to try to do the lectionary readings. In the entire four there's four passages. I pick one to preach from, and then one is usually uh, a psalm, a responsive reading, and there's an Old Testament passage and a New Testament passage. And the lectionary cycles every three years. So once you go through the three-year cycle, you have covered the majority of the main passages of Scripture. And so I wanted to put an emphasis on Scripture this year. So that's why we're doing that. So uh, we're looking at Psalm uh, 772, Psalm 37, responsive reading. Do not be angry because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. But they will soon fade like the grass, and the wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will dwell in the land and enjoy security. Take your life in the Lord, who will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in God, who will act, bringing forth your vindication as the light and your right as the noonday. Be still and wait patiently before the Lord. Do not be angry because of those who prosper in their way, because of those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not be angry. It only it leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall be destroyed. Yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Though you look at their place, 
they would not be there. But the meat shall possess the land, and the life in the land shall perish. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, at this time, we just want to remind everyone that the offering plate is in the back of the church, uh, and we thank you for your giving and continued. Uh, I know we got a thank you from the children's home. Yes, uh, Kentucky United Methodist Children's Home. Of course, y'all know Libby. Uh, uh, I want to call her Lockhart all the time. Libby White <laughs> uh, brought over many blankets, and we delivered about 10 over to the Judy's Place for Kids. And then we sent uh, three, I think, up to the Kentucky United Methodist Children's Home. And we got a note from them uh, saying how much they appreciated that. So. And I, I think she said that's one of the biggest requests or something. But Yes, you know. yes. Especially for male uh, children. They have a lot of effeminate blankets, but they don't get a lot of blankets that are, you know, more for young yep. men. So Libby graciously provided those, and so we, we sent them to them this week. Okay, so if you're able, please stand as we sing our doxology and then we'll ask Richie to pray. <laughs> But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each of seed its own body. And then over to verse 42. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven, as was a man of dust. So are those who are of the dust, and as is the man of heaven. So are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. 
What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the scriptures that are open to us. And uh, we confess our misunderstanding and our confusion so many times. We're thankful for a pastor that opens the scriptures to us and that with explanation. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, most of you know we're in the moving business these days, and it's been quite a challenge. And I had forgotten, I guess, how difficult <laughs> and how much work it is. And I don't know, John has done this several times in the last few years, and all I can say is he's a glutton for punishment or something. <laughs> because I don't find it much fun, John. I, I, I'm not sure what the what you see in all this but because it's a lot of work and uh you know we we when we decided to move to this house um we didn't know what maybe we were getting into uh we loved the place and everything and i remember the first time i went there my brother-in-law owned the house and uh I thought, wow, this is this is great. Right in the woods, overlooking the mountains of Pipeville, up on Cedar Gap subdivision. I'm like, this would be like my dream place. You know, this is this is it. And you know, we had a, a birthday party or something there. It's been 10 years ago, and of course they moved, and and renters have been there. And since then, it has gone downhill quite a bit. Uh, so bad that uh, some of the neighbors had complained because it had just been neglected by the renters. And any of you have ever done rental properties, you know how that can be. And so when we moved, everything pretty much was broken. Uh, every sink, every shower, every commode, everything. I mean, there was nothing, and not only that, not only is it broken, but it's not um, not a normal fix, like just putting one thing in and replacing it. It was more than this person could do. So, you know, I, I can take one sink out and put the same thing in, but everything was twice as hard, did, wasn't it? And so having to call in plumbers and special things, and, and I'm not, I'll admit, I'm not, you know, I, I tried plumbing and I tried carpentry and I found out one thing, I'm not a plumber, I'm not a carpenter. So I, I've learned some lessons there, but I can do some basic stuff. But it's just been, been very tough. But once we get it, <laughs> I think it's gonna be great. There's gonna be a whole lot of work, a whole lot of work still to come. We're still in boxes and then everything, um, just, I don't even want to really go there, but it's a lot of work uh, to think about that. But here's the thing, as I was, we were talking about moving and for the last month or so, we've been anticipating a move. We've been getting ready in this house, boxing things up, getting ready to move to the new house. We're imagining what it would be like. And in some ways we, we, we kind of had an idea, but in some ways we didn't really know what it was going to be like. We're just thinking, you know, how it's going to be to, to sit in this living room looking out over the mountains and this, you know, big windows and, and just, you know, some things we, we anticipated, but some things we didn't know. We didn't know what we were going to expect until we moved in. And then we began to learn this and, and certain things about the place. And I guess in a way that's sort of what the Apostle Paul is saying today in our passage. As we begin to talk about the resurrection and the life after death, there's not a whole lot known about it, honestly. We get some metaphoric language that Jesus gives and some talk about life after death, good and bad, and, and those that uh, will be cut off and different things. But really, most of that is metaphoric descriptive language, and we really don't know what it's going to be like. We don't know exactly how it's going to look. 
and how it's going to be played out. But Paul gives us some, some things about the afterlife, and, and basically it's going to be different, and it's going to be better. And thankfully, when we move to our new home, it's not going to be broken. <laughs> Nothing will be broken. Everything that was broken will then be fixed. And so he begins in chapter 15 by talking about the body, the resurrection body. Because there were a lot of questions in the Corinthian church about the afterlife. And there were those who believed that anything that was material was evil, that it could not possess a body because they considered material things evil. And many of them didn't even believe Jesus had a material body, or the Gnostics, because they felt like that, that would be uh, not a good thing. So some of them said, well, Jesus was only a spirit. And so John goes out of the way to say in 1 John, no, we touched him, we saw him, we, we were right there with him. He was real. He was a real person. He was human, but he was also divine. So in that sense, uh, Paul was sort of addressing some of the same situation. Yes, when we get to heaven, it's going to be a real body. No, we're not going to be flying and on clouds and playing harps all the time. It's not going to be something that you uh, maybe even imagine or saw on television or some picture. It's nothing like you can imagine. Nothing our ears have not heard nor eyes seen what, can, what is in store for us. But it's going to be a real place, heaven, and it's going to be a real body. We're not just floating around like ghosts like you see on television. It's real. But it hasn't happened yet. And Paul says, to begin with, how are the dead raised? And what kind of body do they come? And they use some very descriptive, harsh language here. He uses the word full. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that, but basically he's just saying that's, we're being foolish here. Don't you understand that what you sow does not come to life unless it dies? First, there has to be a death before there can be a resurrection. My mom used to sing a song that I think Loretta Lynn used to sing. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. As I work at a hospital as a chaplain, I see this all the time. I see so many people that, you know, many people, Christians, call themselves Christians. And don't get me wrong, uh, you know, I'm like that, that old song, old country song, prop me up beside the jukebox. That, Lord, I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to go tonight. You know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm wanting God to take me out of here right now. But if we're Christians, if we truly believe what the Apostle Paul is saying, that there is a resurrection after life, that there is a new body, then death should not be something that constantly causes us to fear or worry. Sandy Walters just went through pretty invasive and major surgery. And one of the things that she said was, I wasn't really afraid. Now think about that. She knew she was going under the knife. She knew the risk involved. But she wasn't really afraid. Why is that? And that's because she knows that she said just the other day, I'm a winner either way. I mean, if we really believe what we're preaching, if we're not, then, then yeah, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be scared to death. But if we really believe it, then why don't we live it? Why don't we act on it? Why are we live in our life paralyzed by fear? He says, "What you sow does not come to life unless it dies." And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. In other words, just as you take a seed and you plant it in the ground, a seed for corn or whatever it might be, wheat, when you look at that seed, it looks nothing like, nothing of what it's going to be like. I think Sandy was talking about planting peas or something the other day. Kind of overdid it, but uh, those are not going to look like when they when they're in the final product. 
And you look at that seed, and it's an amazing thing when you look at that, and you think, this is going to be an actual fruit, or a vegetable, or something, someday. What an amazing thing. But first it has to be planted in the ground, and die, and disintegrate, basically. And then out of that, there is life. And it begins to grow. And God does this amazing transformation. And He uses nature. And He uses a light. And He uses water. And He uses earth. And just like the body is planted into the ground someday, each and every one of us, either cremation or whatever it is, we will be disintegrated. We will go back to dust. To dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return, folks. And it's only because of that that Jesus can resurrect us. But it's not going to be this body that we have now. Thank God. Man, I was moving table the other day and got it out of the truck and bent over to pick it up. And my pull, I felt it right here. Mm, muscle just ripped. And I went down on the ground. And for, it's been tough for the two days. And I can tell you, I, I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> but God says that He's going to give us a new body. Not a body of decay, but a body that's new. And He says, God gives it a body as He has chosen, to each kind of seed its own body. Not all flesh is alike, but there is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, birds, fish, and then he says, there's heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly body is one thing, and that of the earth is another. So, we have this flesh. It's sinful. It's dying. It's decaying all the time. But the new body is going to be not of earth. It won't have the same nature. It will have a glorious nature like Christ. And he says, there is one glory of the sun, glory of the moon, stars, different stars and glory. So it is with the resurrection. What is sown is perishable. And then he gives all these antithet antithetical statements about, uh, you know, sown is perishable, raised in imperishable. Sown in dishonor, raised in glory. Sown uh, uh, in weakness and, and raised in power. And there's a difference between the resurrected body and what we have now. And then he says, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. And here he's comparing the first man, Adam. Adam, uh, the, the Hebrew word is Adam, which means earth, ground, man. And as Adam come from earth was the first being, he was a life says he was a living being. But the second Adam, Christ, was a giving being. So Adam was a living being, but Jesus becomes the actual giving being. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Adam was just a living being. We're human beings. But there's something different. Jesus became a giving being. You and I are raised in Christ, spiritually speaking already, by the way. And we're meant to be not just a living being, but a giving being. In other words, we're to do more than just live and make a paycheck and, and just, just get by and, and, you know, go to work, come home and watch television and eat dinner. And that's just living. That's just existing. Christians are meant to be giving beings. That our whole life is made up of this Christ. And it's what we're going to be in eternity. And it's preparation for eternity. In other words... The Bible says that you were raised in Christ spiritually already. That you died when you became a Christian. Now some of us are still dying to some of those ways. But Paul said, I died and you died in Christ. Therefore being resurrected by Christ, you've been made a new creature, creature in Christ Jesus. 
and have been made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In other words, when we come to Christ, there was a funeral. Brother Billy Joe, I remember the day you and Jeff McKinney came to this church to be baptized. I was young, I, w I was just starting out pastoring here. And you all went down to, right here, to what we call a watery grave. And you go underneath that water, and it's a picture of a burial. <laughs> Jesus being buried, and us being buried, saying that we're dying to the old life. And then you're raised out of that water and begin to walk a new life, a resurrected life. We stop being just human beings and become giving beings, life-giving beings. I'll never forget when I was a young man and I was running from God and I was so, uh, so confused. I, I was somewhere between, I guess, just probably close to an agnostic at the time. I just didn't know. And at that time, uh, my mom and my sisters and all of them, even my brother, was, were all going to church. And I, I was just, I wasn't quite there yet, but I think God was working in, on me. He was dealing with me. And I just wanted to get away, so I went to stay with my friend Bob for a summer. And they had a tobacco farm, and I was helping them on the farm. And it was a good way for me to get, because I remember the conviction I felt. I don't know if you've ever felt this, but when they would try to get me to go to church, or they would come home, and they'd be singing the songs from church, and I'd be like, please just hush. And I went to live with my friend, and I didn't even realize it at the time, when they invited me to come work for them on their farm, that his dad was a preacher, a Pentecostal preacher of all things. And I'm like, what in the world? I got away from that and I got this. And he starts badgering us about going to a revival and church. And you know what? God kept working on me. God kept working on me. I grew up in a pretty rough environment. And uh, you know what? I had, uh, I remember that particular morning that, that we had, we went to church once already. My, my best friend got saved, and this was like the second or third night of the revival. And I was driving down the road, going to my grandmother's house, and I hit a piece of ice with the car on a curve in Sika, Kentucky, and lost control of the car. And I saw myself going over a huge embankment. And somehow, I just felt like God took the wheel and I went right back and I went into the ditch. Had I went the other way, it might have been it. And that really shook me, Brother Jim. I, I was really scared. And I thought, if I'd have went over that, it would have, I would have been it. I would have been in an eternity just like this. And I, I decided that night, well, I went to, if God allowed me to get to church, I was going to go for And it was a little Pentecostal church. And when the invitation was given, I walked the aisle, 17 years old, and I said, God, I, I don't know if you want me, but I want you. And if you'll have me, I'll, I'll do the best to serve you. And I died that night. And I got up and I walked out of that church and I remember for the first time, man, the birds were so sweet. It was like walking into a new world. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. My perspective changes. My, the people I hung out with changed. All the things in my life begin to change. And I'm not saying I became perfect, but I began to change. I died that day. But oh, I was resurrected to a new life. And I'm going to tell you today, you can't have the joy of heaven until you've had the death of this body.
and this old life. And you can have that spiritually today. And then someday the glorification will be complete. We're being sanctified, but we will be glorified when we get a new body. We can't be perfect until we get to glory. But that new body will be given to you, and we don't know exactly what it's going to be like. But we know that God's going to give it to us. And you know, what, what's, it going to, what's going to happen? I don't know. But here's the thing. There's a difference between a give, be, human being, just a life, living our life, and giving a life. A giving being. I had the privilege as a chaplain of the hospital, one of the most sacred moments that I've, I've experienced at the hospital is what's called the donor walk. And I work with a family who lost their loved ones. This person would become, I think at the time, was brain dead from an accident. And the family decided that even though this person could no longer live, that they wanted to donate the organs for others. And I led the prayer just before they walked the family down the hall and we had all the employees lined up on both sides of the hall as they walked this patient through the donor walk and the family walking with them and they stopped in the middle as we said a prayer and all was silent and it's a very sacred moment because of that person that's going into the surgeon's table even though they can no longer survive are going to be given parts of their body for others to survive. Organs that will cause others to live, eyes, uh, uh, helping people with their eyesight, uh, all kinds of things for six or seven people will benefit from that one person's life. What a wonderful thing for a family to do. By the way, I believe every Christian should be an organ donor because of this. We should be giving beings. And what better way to do it than when we leave this earth? Because you know what? I'm getting a new body anyway. I don't care. You can burn this body. You can throw it in the, uh, over the hill. I don't care. Because I'm telling you what. Someday I'm going to have a new body. And a new life in glory. And so will you. Why don't you come and walk with us today? I want to ask musicians to come as we pray. Father, today, I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful, God, that I don't have to worry about the future. I don't have it figured out. I used to spend hours trying to understand the book of Revelation and prophecy. And Lord, I just come to realize that there's so much that's unknown that all I have to do really is follow the one that knows the way. And you know the way, and I'm following you, Lord. And I just pray everyone here would just give themselves to you that they might be able to do the same thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Let's stand as we sing number 572. Pass it on. Number 572. Stop it. 
to the world and be the hands and feet of Christ. And may the God who breathed life in the creation be your delight. We go in peace, peace. to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing the first verse of Sent Forth by God's Blessing, number 664.